Hi, Dr. Corona. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. My pleasure. Well, you have written a very interesting book, and I think you've uh, incorporated your name into that book, and we'll definitely get to that. I need to know, and so does the people watching this, who you are exactly. A little backstory. Tell us, tell us about yourself and the things you believe in and uh, what made you write this book. So, uh, you know, I, I started, well, I mean, I, I wanted to be a doctor since I was a little kid. I'm not sure why. I just always did. Dr. Paul was one of my nicknames growing up. Um, and, uh, and, and I just, I, I knew, and when I got into medical school, uh, I kind of knew, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I, I didn't know what I wanted to specialize in. So I liked different aspects of medicine. I chose family practice um, just because I thought being a family doctor, you get to do a little of everything. Um, then the, I started practice in the early nineties and I was always interested in, in mental health, but I just didn't think I'd want to do that full time. So during the nineties in my private practice, um, I just got fascinated with mental health. There was new medications that came out. Um, and I just got fascinated by the, the difference I saw with people, not only mood, but also their physical body, their, you know, pain going away and all these strange things that were happening. So about the year 2000 or so is when I decided to kind of switch my practice over and move into full-time mental health, incorporating also my, my, my uh, you know, knowledge of the body and the physical body, not just the, men, not just the brain. Um, and that's when about, about 2002, 2003 is when I started writing my first book. My first three books took me 12 years to write. Um, I didn't think I was going to write that much, but I just kept going because I had a lot to say. And then after that, I, I took a pause for a little bit and said, okay, what do I want to do here? I really want to teach. And so I thought I, I want to write books for doctors because I want to teach what I do. So then I wrote two smaller books. Uh, they're not out yet, but they're waiting in the wings. And then this book here, I just I it took another break again. I started this one about four or five years ago, and I just I wanted to make a book that was really different. I wanted to make a book that wasn't the dry science of what I do, but actually storytelling. So I wanted I've always wanted to write fiction. I'm a fiction reader since I was a kid. That's my favorite genre, and so I I, I wanted to write a book that about a, a storytelling. So this book I tell. 30 original stories about people, about their struggles, about their triumphs, about their disappointments, their good endings, their bad endings. So I, I wanted to make it a really compelling read, focusing on storytelling. It's amazing how many authors I interview who have uh, gone the route of fiction, but they really want to speak about real things, and they find that fiction is a great way to get a message, the very message they wish to get across passionately. What is your passion? Well, my passion is really helping people, and I, I've seen, I think I've calculated, I've had over 150,000 office visits in my career, um, and I, and so I, I see so many stories. I see so many people come in my office, and and so many people suffering, and, and it's, it's just the suffering that over the years and seeing that, knowing that I really need to do something about that. So what's really driven me is my care for people, you know, trying to alleviate their suffering, and I, I, I really found that doing what I do now, well, not just now, but for many, over a couple of decades, um, treating their mental health problems was more, affected them more than treating their blood pressure, their diabetes, whatever I was doing as a family doctor. I just thought I was making a bigger difference. Um, and I was, I was, you know, people would tell me, you saved my life. And, and I, I hear from families, I hear from friends, like, oh my God, I can't believe you did for what you did for this person. And so I, I just saw the value of what I did, was doing and I, and I just got so turned on to it, um, you know, I decided I just, I need to keep pursuing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a look at your book cover again. Um, you have quite a bit of writing on there then uh, that we need to speak about because, boy, this is interesting stuff. The book is called The Corona Protocol, Scientifically Proven Medical Solution to Stop Addiction, Bullying, Homelessness, School Shootings, and Suicide, 30 Years in the Making. I don't know where to start, but um, that sounds like really good stuff. Um, how do you figure that's going to work? Well, I, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, when I when I came up with the title of the book, I and mean, actually I had a guy who helped me with it. I, I didn't actually make uh, name it, name the book. 
it was before the pandemic. So it's just kind of ironic that my name became pretty popular the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, but the book wasn't ever, uh, the title was never about the pandemic or the virus. Most of the book is, is I talk about depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, PTSD, eating disorders, you know, schizophrenia. So I talk about a lot of different things in the book, but I just decided the, the, the things of the subtitle subjects there were, were things that we really need to talk about. Yes. You know, uh, yes. And, These are problems uh, in society: bullying, homelessness, suicide, um, the, school I, I, shootings. I, I, what's your What's your take? I, you know, I read the entire description of the book, and I was waiting to see if I'm going to cross anything into the metaphysical, and I didn't. So you're keeping everything into the physical, the mental. Can you explain a little bit about how this is meant to work? Well, I mean, again, I think, I think, um, I think a lot of these modern problems that we have in our society, there's a lot of causes. Um, mental health is definitely one of them. Mental health is underlying all those things I just said, all the five things. Uh, addiction, obviously, is a huge problem um, in, in Canada, in the United States, everywhere. Um, huge problem. Uh, bullying is just rampant. You know, it's uh, internet bullying. Bullying at schools, bullying. I mean, there's just, there, there's just, I mean, like you said, metaphysical. I think there's this crudeness now, you know, more of the, this lack of spirituality. I think that, I think our society, our morals and values have been really crumbling over the years. Um, and, you know, because we didn't used to have, you know, homeless all over the place. And, you know, and again, homeless, addiction, mental illness. There you go. Yeah. School shootings. Well, I mean, these people have major problems, you know, and to, can they, can that be prevented? Yes, you got to pick out these kids who are high risk and, and help them. A suicide? Well, that's obviously mental illness. Um, hmm. But yeah, I think I think a lot of our problems in our society are are you know just 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 again things are worsening for um, you know again I, I I use I say spirituality it doesn't mean necessarily certain religions it just means. Um, you know, just values and uh, morals. And uh, I, I just think it's just, there's been a deep generation of that. And, and there's, you know, there's way more shootings now than there ever used to be, you know, in years past. Back in the Wild West, there was a lot of guns. There weren't school shootings back then. Hmm. Uh, so I think that there's something that's really happened in our society um, that's uh, just, it's really kind of degenerated in my opinion. And, and I, I don't know how it is, where you are, but in the United States, it's just, you know, it's crumbling. It's a mess yeah. here. We're one, uh, we're a small uh, country when it comes to population, but we have our problems too. We had the worst mass shooting in Canadian history here in Nova Scotia, I think three years ago. It was a shock to us all. And yeah. uh, there was a mass stabbing in Ottawa just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it happens here, but we have far less people. So I think per capita, we were no one, but not much in better shape. But in your country, it's highly politicized. And how do you uh, how do you reckon that with what you're trying to teach? Well, I think um, I try to keep out of the politics in my book as much as I can. Um, you know, but I think I just, I think you know I personally think you know over involvement of government is not helping. You know, I think um, you know I, again I'm. I lean lean more towards the right. I mean, I I hesitate saying that because I don't want to. I don't want, I don't want people to get upset at me who who don't. Um, but I, I just I believe um, that uh, you know things have degenerated because I think the growth of government. You know, uh, when when the government grows too much, it crowds out religion. It crowds out spirituality. It crowds out morals and values. I think yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my personal take on it. Um, it's not that simple though, because, you know, but we, and we have, we just, we were in a very polarized country right now. The United States is extremely polarized. Um, people hate each other on both sides and it's just, it's not a good environment. It's just, no. it's just. And that's causing some, a lot of the problems that you're trying to alleviate with your practice. Are you putting this practice into practice? Like what kind of people come to you for help? Um, I, not the traditional coughs and colds and, and infections and, um, basically people who have like chronic pain. So the, the title of my first three books are Heal, Healing the Mind and Body, the trilogy. 
Um, so what I call mind body medicine. So what I discovered in the, in the 90s when I started practice is this connection and a, a, a typical example when someone is stressed out, they have headaches or they have back pain or they have stomach problems or they have. So why, why would they have pain associated with an, an emotion? So why? Because they're related. The nervous system is related to the body. It's all over the body. So that's when I started to see that. Well, this is fascinating. You know, when I would when I would help their stress, then their headaches get better. Their their fibromyalgia goes away. Their irritable bowel syndrome goes away. Why is that? So that's what uh, that, that's why I, I broke away in the early 2000s because I decided I. I I, I saw that I that people weren't picking up on this. Doctors weren't talking about it. I was not reading about it in the journals or the or the textbooks. So I decided that I needed to write about it because I, I wasn't seeing anyone else doing that. And um, so that's what what who come and sees me are people in chronic not only emotional pain but physical pain. And they've gone to their doctors. They don't know what to do. They're given pain pills, which you know I don't do. Um, and they, they treat the surface, they treat the symptom, but they don't think that they don't sit back and go, well, you know, why is this symptom happening? Why is this, you know, let's just not cover it up. Let's get to the root cause of it. And so that's what I do with my patients. I try to get to the really the root cause of why do you have insomnia? Why do you have pain? Why do you have anxiety attacks? Why do you, uh, why are you depressed? And so, uh, you know, I try to get to the core of it. And it's fascinating when you treat someone at the internal core level that all these other things get better. You know, mm -hmm. their pain goes away, their sleep gets improved. So yeah, so I, I that's my my goal is is to really um and I and I um you know and I really try to connect with my patients. I spend a lot of time with them and I, I try to really connect as far as really good customer service. They can always call me any day they want and I always answer their calls the same day. Because I need to get to know them. I need to know, I, you know, the more I get to know them, the best I can, better I can help them. Okay, good. I, I really don't understand the United States uh, medical system all that much. I know there's uh, uh, insurance companies. Are you on what is called a network? Um, I, I'm on the, yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm like Blue Cross, which is a big, a big one in the United States. I'm on, you know, I take Medicare. You know, a lot of my patients pay out of pocket. I don't, okay. you know, some of this insurance I don't take, but yeah, I, I take some. Okay, cool. I think different uh, than the Canadian. Yeah. yeah, you know, in listening to you talk about uh, your practice and what you believe in, I've heard uh, yoga practitioners making same similar claimants, uh, chiropractors, and and even uh, holistic doctors, if you want to call them that. What makes you different from them? Well, and, and it's interesting because I mean I think there's value to those providers. I, I don't Western doctors don't have all the answers, but I think what I I call what I do holistic medicine, and holistic means helping the body heal itself. Well, if you understand what we call psychotropic medications, antidepressants, mood stabilizers, what they do is they rebalance a person's own natural neurochemistry. And that's all they do. They're not covering things up. You know, they're not, I'm not talking about like things like Xanax and things like that. I'm talking about, you know, things that gets the core of the problem. And they actually, that's what they do. They're kind of rewiring the system. And they're, they're basically getting the system back to where the way it's supposed to be. And the reason it goes out of balance, genetics is a biggie. Um, hormonal changes is a biggie. Um, and stress, I mean, the, the situational stress, trauma, all these things play a role and they just throw the system out of, out of balance. So all medications are doing is that, is, is getting the system back into balance. There's one of two things I'm looking for with the, at, the, at the end result here, either, and we call it remission. Remission means either people telling me, this is the old, you got me back to myself again. I feel like I haven't felt this good in years. Um, or some people say, no, I don't think I've ever felt this good. You know, and, and these are people probably have, don't have great childhood. They don't have good memories of growing up, you know, you know, and so that's the goal is that, and that's exactly what I achieve with patients is where they just feel like, I feel like a natural sense of self. Exactly. That's why I, all I'm doing with these medications is, is working on your chemistry. That's why you feel like yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then, then again, chiropractors can adjust things and the, and you, I mean, I, I believe in relaxation techniques with yoga and breathing and, exercising and, and all those things that that they do I, I, I definitely there's there's value with what they do for sure yeah 
Well, to the best of your understanding, is are there is this a movement? Do you know of any other doctors who feel this way, um, or, or are you are you guys in the minority? I'm definitely uh, an enigma, I think, that to the people because you know I, I'm the only doctor I know uh, who does full time psychiatry, but but is trained as a family doctor. I don't know anyone else who's done that. Um, and do I know someone else? Not really. And this is what's what's caused me to write. Um, and when I when I finished my first three books, again, 12 years of writing, four, four years per book, um, and I wasn't satisfied because I thought, you know, I thought, yeah, they came out okay, but, you know, I, I need to teach, you know, I really need to get to doctors. And there's a whole lot of primary, you know, my audience really would be primary care doctors, and there's a lot of uh, what we call physician assistants and nurse practitioners. I'm not sure if they have them in Canada. but Yes, they, yes they, we do, yeah. Yeah, and so there are a lot of providers, and uh, most of them don't know what to do with these medications. They don't know how to how to take. It. And so that's why you know I, I created two smaller books before I before I started on this one, and I didn't even know I was going to do this one when I wrote those two because I thought I wanted to teach, and so I got to get I got to get some training manuals. So I wrote those, um, and then those are kind of they're they're finished. They just need some editing, but um, I'm waiting on those until. I get some traction with this book and hopefully then I get some interest with, from doctors about, you know, setting up a course, but that's my mission. My mission is, is to teach. Uh, I'd love to do some traveling and speaking and all that, but I really want to teach um, doctors and other providers so they can help their patients. So there's, a, there's so many people out there who yeah. need help. Right. So many out there. Is there something in the book that a person who's reading it, who's perhaps having problems with fibromyalgia or uh, migraine headaches or th stuff and under a lot of stress that they could put into practice just by reading a story or two and going, you know what, I think I'm going to try doing what that character there, there did. Is, is that what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think when, I think people will relate to the stories, maybe not all of a certain story, but like some of it and say like, Oh, a person, because I talk about all these things, that it's common things I see, but I weave them into stories. And so I think when people say, oh, man, there's a solution for that? You mean some, something as simple as that could help? Mm -hmm. Why didn't my doctor talk about this? Well, because they're not, you know, you know, primary care doctors aren't, that's not their, what they're focused on. They're focused on, oh, here's the, here's something for your symptom. That's, they, they work on symptoms, basically. Yeah. And so I think when people see it, like, oh, there's another way of going around about this. Um, then, you know, then what do they do? Well, they either have to find a doctor that does it <laughs> or they can come see me because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people remotely, or, um, you know, uh, around the country. Oh, so you uh, do like a Zoom calls, uh, meetings like that, things like that? Zoom or phone. Okay. Yeah. That's so, uh, so I'm, I'm also have a pretty active practice, out, you know, out of California, beyond California. Um, but you know, there's, you know, I'm, you know, am I busy? Yeah, but I love being busy. And, um, but yeah, I, I really want to get to that point, you know, where, you know, people that are, that don't have, you know, live in the out areas there, they don't have uh, modern access to medical care where they can really get the help they need. And, um, and I, again, we just, we need way more providers who understand how to treat this in order to help that many people. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot about uh, bad nutrition, you know, people eating the wrong foods. Do you cover that subject? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think, and, and there's a couple of stories that come to mind. One is, is Jim. Um, but yeah, I talk about, you know, uh, we, we talk about, I talk about some of the stories about stress eating and, and um, a lot of people eat too many carbs, too many sugars, and normally that's stress related. Um, but yeah, but I think that, Proper nutrition is extremely important. Like I said, I, I talk a lot about exercise in the book because I think it's just really important that people get on a reg some some type of regular exercise program. It's good. It's good for the body physically. It's good for stress, um, and it's good for you know fit for fitness too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it is, and because the being overweight and it's just it's not healthy you know, for, for at all. You know, and then during the the era of COVID it increased risk of being very overweight too. Yeah. So. Well, I had the um, the knowledge ahead of time when I was contacted by your uh, publicist uh, of your name. And when I first saw it, I thought, Corona, interesting name. 
but then I went to check your book and go, okay, well, then I just dispelled the, the, the coincidence that between your name and uh, the pandemic we, we're, we've gone through. Did it ever occur to you, since this book was published in this year, in 2024, to call it something other than the name you gave it? I was I thought about it, but I decided against it because because <clears throat> people people like the title. They said it was a very compelling title, you know. And and it, it's not gonna. And then when you read the subtitle, it's gonna it doesn't say anything about the pandemic. So uh, you know, it, and it's not about that. You know, there there's some now there is some pandemic related material in, in some of the stories, um, you know, because there were so many mental health problems associated with the pandemic. But uh, but no, I, I didn't because you know I thought you know, people people think it's it's an intriguing name. It's just, it's just it's it sounds like a suspense novel. It sounds like a Tom Cruise movie. It sounds like you know <laughs> the, it's, it's, people think it was just an interesting um, compelling name and, and it makes people want to know like what does that mean? Or, you yeah. know, especially when they read the subtitle. Yeah. Then they're... Well, that 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 part really got me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it was only released uh, this past year, maybe a month uh, since, you know, we're talking now. How are sales for you? Yeah, sales are good. Um, I, I think, like I said, the interest in the book, the reviews I'm getting are excellent. Um, I'm, you know, I've had some patients already finish it and they just, you know, love it. And so I love hearing that, of course, because that's what I want to. And I asked them, I said, do you, do the stories, I didn't want to get too medical with the stories. And they're like, no, there was a good balance between the medical part that you do, what you do, and what the story's about, and and um, you know, and again, there's some, yeah. You know, so I, I think uh, I'm just I'm happy when I hear the response of, from other people because you know that's why that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Maybe some people are didn't like it and they're not telling me that. I don't know. Maybe mm. that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's selling hundreds in just about a month since it's been released. Good for you. Do you have a website? Yes, so it's uh, drpaulcoronamd.com, and um, on there, there's you know, there's well, there's act, there's there's a bunch of testimonials, there's a blog site, there's a lot of information about, about my practice. Um, I'm also on X, which buzz Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I have a podcast, the Dr. Paul Show, uh, on on Spotify. I've done over 130 podcasts, um, and so uh, that's that's how people and people can reach me uh, pretty easily at the office. They can email me. You know, if someone's interested in in consulting with me, then we can talk. So, yeah. Well, we'll put all that in the description below so people could click and see what you're all about. I think what you're doing is uh, fascinating. Now, you said you were working on another book. What's that one going to be about? Well, the, again, there's the two previous one, my fourth and fifth book, the Corona um, Protocol Prescriber's Guide and the Corona Protocol Three Secrets to Success. So those are the those are the two doctor books that I'm, I'm that I, I finished, but they just need need to be edited right now. But I'm, I'm kind of waiting to release those until doctors are showing more interest. And after that, my next project, I'd like to write another fiction. I'd like to write a fiction novel that has nothing to do with medicine. So that's my <laughs> My next, uh, my next would be a like an adult fantasy novel that, that I've been thinking about for many years. But I'm, at, I'm at the point right now. I'm just, I'm tired of writing, and I'm just, <laughs> I've done enough. You know, I've done enough for now. So I'm gonna, I'm putting that on the back burner for at some point in the future when I want, when I want to get back into writing again. But after mm -hmm. 20 years of writing now, and, and yeah. this, it's like it's enough already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well. When you get those uh, other two books that uh, you're waiting to see how this the Corona protocol works, uh, why don't you come back and uh, talk to your publicist and have you have you be a guest on my show again? I really enjoy speaking with you. You do. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, close up? Uh, no, I just, uh, I think, like I said, I, I think with your audience, just to just remember, uh, and I tell patients this all the time, don't give up hope. I mean, I think like I, I see so many people suffering and so many people who who feel or even people who've seen other doctors and they give up hope because the, the doctors disappointed them or they didn't they, they they didn't get what they wanted. You know, it's not give up. I think that, you know, don't give up hope because, uh, you know, 
there is there's I, every patient I see who, who says they come in feeling hopeless every time at the end of the at the end of the treatment they're better and so there is an answer don't despair get help okay well said well dr corona it's been a pleasure speaking with you and uh, listening to what you have to offer this world and i wish you all the success thank you so much appreciate it take care Thank you for watching. If you like what I do here on Tell Me About Your Book, then please consider hitting that like button and leaving a comment. You can also subscribe and ring that bell because I release two episodes per week, one on Wednesdays and one on Saturdays. And if you are an author, I would love to hear from you. Until such time, keep on writing and be kind to one another.